Hi everyone, welcome back to Studio 33 Art by K. In this video, I'm going to be doing an experiment using the Just Resin Ocean Coat Resin just to see how it goes with forming the lacing and cells for the waves. Um, I have been told that it is good for doing that, so we'll give it a go. Um, I'm just doing a voiceover, so I'll just um, explain what I'm doing as I can see it in front of me here. So I'm just mixing up um, some of that particular resin into a cup here. Um, and I'm going to do a small amount of the Illumilite white. Um, it's, it's a liquid uh, that I use to do my um, waves. And I'm just mixing that up with a small amount of the um, ocean coat. And that's going to be what I'm going to use to form my waves. So as you can see, I'm just adding a small amount in there. Uh, I don't put a lot, so it's just, just enough to um, make an opaque uh, paste, really, um, that I will then spread. So now I'm going to be just mixing that in the little tumbler there. Make sure that it is well mixed into it and that it is um, opaque. How I like it to be. Yep, and you can see there that it um, actually is quite opaque, which is great. So now I'm just going to take the resin and add a little bit of the Folk Art Dragonfly Glaze, um, which is one I particularly like to put into my resins. I only need to put a drop though. Um, if you put too much, it can actually make the resin look very cloudy and it is even stays cloudy once it's dry. I have learnt that by experience and ruined a whole set of coasters by um, putting too much of that in. So just a drop and it just gives a beautiful glittery effect. It comes in, a, I think, six different colours um, just to give you different colour shifts. And so I'm just mixing that in there and that'll give a nice glittery effect across the um, piece of art that I've done here. So this is actually just a 38 centimetre wide placemat, which is cork backed. Um, and I find these are great for making for table centrepieces for people. And they often like to match these up with um, matching coasters as well. So a piece of functional art uh, and they're lovely. Now, because the ocean coat um, doesn't have a high heat resistance, it's only up to um, the about the, as hot as a hot cup of coffee, which would be about between 50 and 80 degrees, I believe. Don't hold me to that. I will actually finish this whole piece off uh, later with a coat of the um, stone coat countertops um, resin, which has a heat resistance up to 240 degrees centigrade, so much, much higher heat resistance. Um, so anyway, here I am um, spreading out the the resin across this and I'll just um, speed this up a little bit here so you don't have to watch me doing this whole process. So I'm now just making sure that I've covered my edges as well. It's important to make sure you have a nice um, covering there of your resin around your edges. So just pop a little bit onto the um, stick there and then gently spread it around the edge. Some people like to use their gloved hand to do the um, edges here, but I don't like to do that. I like to use an implement instead. Um, and on that note, please make sure you use um, the correct PPE when you're doing any resining. Um, I always use the nitrile gloves, not just any rubber gloves. And um, I also make sure I wear a full respirator, uh, even if, you know, the, the brand does say that you don't need to do that. I like to do that anyway, just to be extra sure, because it doesn't take a second to put on a respirator and... Um, you know, it's no problem at all to do that. So why not be extra safe, really? 
So yeah, I'm just spreading that around. And now I'm just taking my um, blowtorch there, which is just a chef's brulee torch, just to burst any bubbles. It also just heats the resin up a little bit. Um, so mainly to burst the bubbles actually. And so I've done that now. And the next step will be just to check it, make sure that I've actually burst all those bubbles. Just running it over again. Yep. And now I will just add a little bit more. I've just looked to see that I haven't missed any spots. Sometimes you think you've covered it all and you haven't, so I just made sure I had filled in a spot there. Now I'm taking the white mixture with the Illumilite white paste mixture that I made up with the resin and I'm just making a nice little thin line here across where I'm going to then blow that out to create my lacing. So I'm just gently spreading that. I find if I do about around about a centimetre wide line um, you need to experiment with that yourself though. Some people say to do it thinner, some thicker, and I guess it depends on the, the resin that you're using as well. But in this case, I'm doing about a centimetre wide going across. So I just keep um, spreading that to the edge and making sure I've got, got it about that one centimetre wide. Um, and so now I'm going to just put that down. I've made far too much as usual, but I will use that little bit um, in something else just so I don't waste it. Now I'm just bursting the bubbles again, just um, and warming it up just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to get my heat gun I have put the um, wedding cake end on it, nozzle on it, as you can see, which is just a narrow end. You can use a wider one as well, um, but again, you just need to experiment. Today, I'm just using the, the wedding cake nozzle and at 250 degrees, heated it up. And so now I shall just start to blow that out, trying to keep my nozzle pretty much um, lying parallel with the um, board there and then just gently pushing out with the nozzle slowly going across you can see that that's creating some cells already which is great I've, I have found that when I've used the other um, resin the um, what's the name of that the platinum um, art class resin. It laces up straight away more than what this one did, uh, but it is still working quite well. Um, but I have needed to, to work this a lot more and it does give a slightly different effect. But nonetheless, it is working, so that's great. So I'll just keep pushing that out. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking the heat and um, pushing straight down from above just to try and get the uh, cells to come up a bit more. And they are coming up a bit more, so that's good. It's pretty much the heat causing that um, to happen. And now I'm just scraping off that little blob that I accidentally um, put on there. Just getting some of my resin and filling in that little spot. Which is the great thing about this particular resin. I have a much greater work time. With the fast set resin, um, I already would have been getting into trouble there. It would have been starting to set up on me. Uh, but this particular one, it, it was fine because um, 
have that extra time. So it was one of the major benefits. And now I'm just taking my brulee torch and I'm just uh, doing little bursts of uh, heat, so not holding it in the spot for too long, otherwise I would be burning my resin. But just giving little um, close bursts of um, heat just to try and get some more cells happening there. And that does seem to be um, breaking that resin up a bit more and, and creating those cells. So now I'm just uh, getting down at eye level and just checking for any bits of dust or any little bubbles that haven't burst. And obviously I've seen a little bit of dust, so I just take a little stick like the uh, bamboo stick and just gently tap it like I did. Oops, there goes my brulee torch. Just tapping on there to try and pick up that little bit of dust. If you see three little dots in a row or four, that probably means there's a piece of lint. Um, and so you just use your little skewer there and, and dip underneath and lift it up. But if there's just a tiny bit of dust, I just tap the um, stick onto the resin and it will usually lift any dust off there. So I just heated that again, last minute, getting rid of any last bubbles. And I now will cover this and uh, let that set up overnight. Um, and we'll come back uh, once it's set and um, see what the final result looks like. See you back here soon. Oh, and don't forget, I almost forgot, to wipe your drips out from underneath, um, around the edge there. Otherwise, they will continue to draw your resin off from the top and you don't want it all to run off there. So just get your little paddle pop stick and scrape underneath just to wipe all those little drips off. Um, and it also makes it easier to remove your tape later as well if there's not too much resin underneath. So it's a pretty important step to um, follow there. So I'm just continuing to go around and until all of those um, drips have been removed. So here we are back again with the dried result of the um, Just Resin Ocean Coat resin, which I tried um, for the lacing and the waves. I quite like it. Um, I'm still thinking that I probably prefer the um, waves and foam look that you get, the cells that you get with the um, Platinum Art Class resin, but it does set up very, very quickly. Whereas this Just Resin Ocean Coat um, was a lot slower to set up, which was great. It gave me a lot more work time, so I did really um, prefer it from that point of view. Um, so, and it was my first and so far only go at doing the um, the lacing and waves with this particular resin. So maybe I'll get different results using different white um, and also maybe using a different heat source as well. But um, all in all, I think it's given me exactly what it did promise and that is cells and lacing. So let me know what you think of that one guys. Do you like that um, final result? I'll just zoom out. Okay, so I'll see you back here in Studio 33 in the not-too-distant future. Until then, stay safe. Bye-bye.